when you have self-love, you know how to love others. Now, why is that? So some people I have seen online, they tell you that self-love is a myth, being yourself is a myth. But I know, one, I'm a 5D mystic in the Enlightenment Soul Age group, so I need to specify because I have a whole inner child here. So I have no shame, and that's why I'm also a functional adult. It's also why I'm good with the whole woo-woo pseudoscience lady. Because I bring human, spiritual, and spirituality elements together. So I love education, and I keep getting attachment and trauma-informed because I support people who are serious about personal development and self-help. Being yourself is a beautiful journey, and the five D mystics are Christ consciousness. The lovely example of Jesus, and that's a restorative embodiment as Buddha. So enlightenment, so age group is possible because we have a window of welcome to emotions. That's because my inner child, though, I didn't get fear mongered at home. And I have a twin, so I know the, yes, uh, meaning and connection beyond the solo self. I was not born alone, so I got lucky. I love humans. I'm a human myself, and that's where human and spirit, one and the same, my mind, my heart, my gut. Mm, yeah, that's right. Actually, the brain, the heart, and the gut are three brains, and I'm not going to get into that. But what I wanted to say is I do not have a uh, attachment wound. I do not have also these emotional childhood wounds of rejection, abandonment, injustice, betrayal, or shame slash humiliation. So when I somewhat, when I see someone saying self-love is a myth, being yourself is yes, yucky, I'm like, wow, they need good therapy. They don't notice that their past, their inner child is leading the way. Ah, uh, there's your one-year-old wasn't welcome somewhere. Oh, look, the three to seven, shame submissive. They're putting their head down like that. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Oh, look, there's some Peter Pans. They're following Wendy's. Oh, look, they're, they're, there's the jocks and the cheerleaders over there. Oh, wait, are we talking a Venus of Goddess of May? Where's the 4D Chandler? Oh, there she is. Okay, so I'm a mystic again. Um, but I'm not a flat earther. That's why, again, woo-woo sort of science and lovely physics physicists, metaphysicists, they're good academics. They know, one, no human is inherently good or evil or bad. Uh, two, there's neuroscientists that prove there's no demon that possesses people when there's decentralization of the self. Thank you, Patrick McNamara. Uh, then there's also, oh yeah, the heart problem of consciousness. I laugh like when I heard the uh, secondary consciousness of us humans, they call it the dilemma, the existential psychology. It's not a dilemma. Window welcome to emotions right here. Right in front of you. I'm consciousness. I'm presence. You name it. I'm a human being. Thank you, Jesus, so much. That's the only person and God. But, you know, I need to call God Akash now. So when you have no shame because your inner child didn't get mortified by some big human being, what happens? What happens is this. And you love education because I love to learn my left mode. Oh, I love to think. Oh, ask me how many days I think. I'm always thinking. We even have a blog post on how overthinking, really, really, because see, for me, it's not hard to think because it's not hard to feel because I know about this thing called worthy. That's what self-love is about, which is why it's not a myth. Actually, if you don't know that yourself is right here, you don't know how to feel gooey, ooey, ooey inside. Okay, so your past always comes with you. Did you know that trauma cannot be deleted, but it can be minimized? Hmm, let me think again. Those who limit human consciousness. I don't think they do know their worth. That's why they would say to anyone, oh no, don't be yourself. Please don't. So what they mean is remember to please live a life that is beyond the solo self. So let me explain. When you know that you're part of a herd, did Manny and Diego. So it's not just common sense for some people. It's true. They have envy and jealousy and they have blame have shame. Those are safety behaviors. Oh, that's right. What was it? Oh, Stephen. Thank you so much, Stephen Porges. A sense of control is really a sense of predictability. When a nervous system is in a constant state of defensiveness, control is a warm blanket because they have difficulty dealing with uncertainty. That answers a lot of things. <laughs> wow. Now I didn't know that the right mode, thank you, Daniel Siegel, is what deals with uncertainty and wants it in unexpected but I did know how to use it myself which is what we're going to get into <laughs> inner growth mindset it is easy to use your mind if you're an emotionally uh, welcoming person or an emotional lifting person thank you Patrick Tiahan those who need Patrick Tiahan because they need to lift that's a good therapist so they don't project okay 
some of us, we like personal development because we got lucky. And we like self-help because we also got lucky. And some of us are mystics, so we love to have channeled guidance because we also got lucky. Christ consciousness, it's straightforward as it gets. But don't ask the ones who are on Nelson's journey because they think that they're anointed and more special. They're called spiritual bypassers. They've created their unique role so that their zero one year old and three year old could be, what is it again? Welcomed and not rejected. Uh, taken in and not abandoned. Oh, finding justice. That's the fourth, uh, fourth step to healing any of trauma stuff. So when you have an attachment wound, trauma depends, depends, because these are different subject matters. Again, it's a very complex subject. That's why I'm pseudoscience lady. Attachment trauma, I bring it to you for personal development. I'm not making any blanket statements. This is subjective opinions, okay? Please discern and then ask questions. The grown-ups know how to ask questions. They say, hey, Maria, can you tell me about the courses you took? Of course I can. Which ones do you want? Where do you want the therapist that I learned from? Because I can give you a whole bunch of them. You know what I get when I'm out there in the world saying, love is easy. So I was thinking, not again. You must be pretending, Maria. You smile. I bet you're depressed inside. You know how many times I've thought about telling people when they say something like that? And one time I actually, what I love is when people actually tell you their face things. Oh, and so, yeah, I got one person. It was this one time and they just turned and were like, yeah, you pretend smiler. And I'm like, I have to pose. I don't want to be serious. Why would I do that? I want to smile in the camera. I like to see myself smile. Or like when people, so here's what self-love is. So if somebody told you, you're more beautiful when you cry. Yeah, how many of you would think, okay, so here's a, a person who always can see the best in anyone. Yeah, That's so cute. They're trying to help me feel better while I'm crying and being, you know, all pouty and whatever. And then there's the other part of you that says, wait a minute, are we sure? Or did they maybe mean that they are okay with you crying, which means they don't give a shit about you crying. Now let me ask them, shall I? Hey, so did you tell me this thing about uh, crying because you're trying to make me feel better or were you actually telling me that you like to see me cry? Eh? That makes a difference. I'm going to ask you, can you please tell me the truth? Okay, so you know when you have self-love and you're an inner child, here's where I don't know how to lie. I, people that know me, they know that. <laughs> I don't try to lie. No, I don't. If I did... I would, I would be really, really bad at it. And so here's where I'm okay with being myself. <laughs> so whenever I'm presented, I'm trying to think of which stories to tell right now because there are stories that I could share. Let's just put it this way. All of us are imperfect and flawed. I'm okay with being an evil bitch and evil witch because I'm not going to be trying to do any of it, but I know what subjective life experience is all about. Okay, so if you get pouty at me, I'm going to be able to talk to you. <laughs> I'm going to be able to practice my pacha stance. And I'm going to be able to say, you know what? You're right. I was wrong. And you know what? I'm right. No, I don't go around doing that. But if somebody presents to me that I was wrong, I'm going to listen. And like Terry Real points out, when you have healthy self-worth, you don't really uh, do the, oh, my God, did I do something wrong? Nope. Some of us, we just say, hmm, let me think. Nope, that's not what I intended. And when they come back to you and say, no, no, I'm going to accuse you of it. So the part about being accused, oh, there's plenty of stories that I could share about that one. I know what I intend. Like I know that I'm not a solo self. So I also know that there are people who live lip service, I think is the word, the mental health mantles and the yoga mantles. Yeah, so whenever I meet a mantle, I'm thinking of any person who's really not in any way, shape, or form going to be, um, hmm, they're not securely attached. So it's like the teenagers that I met. All they know is fear, which is why I'm not going to use my time because I have a person who doesn't know self-love. They don't know how to spell the truth. They don't know about emotional lifting. They're not going to therapy. They are not loving others and whatever they're bringing to me. You better bet your butt I know that it's bullshit because I know exactly what my heart intends and I know I can't prove it because I've been in those situations before, which is why you tell me I'm an evil bitch, evil witch. You call me all the names in that book. It's not personal. As teenagers will have pointed out, it's not personal, Maria. And I'm like, hmm, wait a minute, let me think. Ah, that's right. There you go. Very easy. It wasn't hard. 
because I'm not a whiner, because thanks, mom, I learned that we're different. Thanks, teenager. Thanks, twins. Thanks, all. Okay, so when you have a twin and you're a teenager, and you know, I have actually a funny story here. My twin and I had friends that are twins, and they decided, the three of them, to gang up and decide to play a joke. I don't have a sense of humor, unless it's people who know how to have me laugh. And there are people who know. You know it's fun? That's fun. When people actually figure out a way to have a person like me to have fun because they have this way of wanting to figure out how <laughs> to make you laugh, which not everybody cares about, by the way, because they're too busy wanting you to mold into whatever it is they think you're supposed to laugh about, which is very different than somebody saying, okay, wait, she has a sense of humor somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to figure out how I can help her get it out of there. And those are the people that in my herd, they help me to figure out how to have a sense of humor. So they help me to learn things that I literally and actively don't know how to do. <laughs> and that's why it's beautiful to have 5D life right here. So you meet always herd members that help you to become a better version of yourself when you're already like, I'm imperfect and flawed, but I'm living beyond the solo self. So let's all have fun together. <laughs> and you're a shit. No, you're a shit. No. That's what healthy self-worth, five-year relationships, come on over. Okay, so we don't do, it's a myth, don't be yourself, don't love yourself, go and be something. No, it's either go to good therapy to get reparented, then you'll figure out being yourself. You will feel change. That's true. I don't know that path because I didn't have to change myself. See, I'm a full piece of consciousness right here. I continue expanding to self-love and loving others always more and more and more. Okay, so these three teenagers who were twins, two of them, and then one was my twin, they played a joke on me. I wasn't laughing, and they were all laughing. That's the reason I figured out, what you put in my, what did you give me to eat? They gave me something to eat, and I did not find it funny. As a teenager, I uncovered, you're all unsafe. I do not want to play, and I will not play with you. That's called self-love. I got told that I looked like a snob. I was like, well, I'm not a snob. Am I picky? I thought of myself as not picky until somebody was able to present to me, no, you are picky. And I'm like, mm, wait a minute, I am selective. Yes, I'm selective. It's called healthy self-worth, but believe me, I'm selective in a way that isn't going to be a snoot. However, if I don't like you, well, that's why you might think I'm an evil bitch or an evil witch. And at that point, I'm not wanting to be friends with you, not because you're an energy vampire or dark one. No, because you're a person who is going to have low self-esteem, indirect communication, passive aggressive manners, and you're going to be a teenager like all those other teenagers, which means you're unsafe. Also means you're an asshole, means that you're not going to take ownership about when you're projecting your human suffering, and you're telling me that life sucks again and again and again. And humans suck and men suck, and women suck, and I'm going to have to hear this sucking thing, and I'm thinking about therapy, <laughs> and I'm thinking about all the things that are happening out there in the world, and this is social time, and I'm supposed to be here with you while there's actual important things to do, yeah, so no, I'm going to be selective, because life is not hard for those of us who self-love ourselves <laughs> and love life, no, 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 Life is easy. I have two hands. I'm in a screen. I'm sharing with people how to be themselves. And I'm pretty sure most people who can put time in personal development will be able to know that you're lucky compared to some people. So my thing is every day is a good day. Why? Because I chose so from my chit chatter. Look, look. Hey, I got emotion. That means I'm breathing. Wow, my heart's still. Oh, look, it doesn't break. <laughs> it's a muscle. I learned that as a teenager, too. When I actually said, oh, it doesn't break. You can't break my heart. Try again. Let's see. Oh, really? <laughs> You're going to go down. That's another coward over there. There's another one. Oh, look, they're falling all over the place. I think they're all huddled up as teenagers do, being assholes to each other. I'm over here <laughs> having fun. Human suffering love. It's really boring. And when they tell you that self-love is a myth or being yourself is bullshit, they don't know about attachment or trauma information. I do, which is why it is about you being yourself, the way you connect to others. You're a mammal and I'm a mammal. I get really excited. See, this is the part of where all the lovely attachment trauma information people are out there. So I can have fun because humanity doesn't need us mystics. And some mystics think that they're keys. <laughs> And I always will remember the moment where I was like, okay, Maria, you're not needed because all of these great therapists are out there and people will be able to have heaven in their body 
and humanity is saved. So you are unnecessary, <laughs> completely <laughs> unnecessary. And that's not a joke. And I was like, aw. And I was like, wait a minute. That means I'm free to just be able and have fun and share about 5D Mystic Enlightenment Functional Adult Life all the way to my whole three-year-old heart and back and around. And so here's what a three-year-old wants to do when you know how to be yourself easily and then you get attachment trauma and torment. We can thank the educators for me being here because I do thank Jesus and God and my mom and my twin and my younger sister. I know I need to keep, I need to thank her too, but she's my baby sister. So I get to be a nurturer. <laughs> And I chose that I would be allowing her to do anything she wants because she's the baby. That's what happens with the divine feminine, by the way. That's why we need divine masculine. Because we know as soon as there's a cute little <laughs> anything, that's, that's something small and that is, you know, we're going to want to nurture it. And that's not in any type of mean way. Because those who do not know how to nurture kindness and compassion they do not have integration of the brain they don't have the restorative embodiment they don't have their inner child they don't have their mammalian heritage they don't know self-love because they don't even know who they are yet because their inner child is leading the way with rejection abandonment shame wounds and they want to prance around and tell people not to be their self so that's an incomplete story as is incomplete to say love yourself alone so I understand that when we want to talk about self-love, which is why I go on an expansion journey with you, I don't use sales pitch. I'm an online marketer, and the sales pitch sentences are bullshit. They allow people to just read the headline and say, hey, look, I have proof. <laughs> and then, you know, it all depends. Sometimes you find some good content in there. Sometimes you don't. If you're an educated person, you're going to use both. And you're going to discern and you're not going to say yoga brings demons out of the body or that Reiki is evil or any of that. You're going to be like, what are we, what year is this? Really? Medieval ages? What is it? Are we still actually believing that tarot is some evil shit? It's energy. But you know what is also humorous? <laughs> oh, I saw this one lady. Okay. So again, before we go, what happens when you know how to love yourself? all of the imperfections and flaws. I unconditionally love Maria just the way she is. Thank you, mother. I have no shame whatsoever, not even a little bit. Oh, you can call me all the names in the book. And even people who I love to death, even people who I love to death, this is the part. When you have practiced being able to see your zero one year old to soothe your zero one year old to know that you're safe and to know that you're secure, called I'm an inner child and you can tell me all day long you don't like me I'll find the people who like me just the way I am and I will not be changing any little inch of me not even one because I can't but also because I got taught thank you God that I was made exactly the way that God wanted me to be made and as an inner child who didn't get fear mongered this is what I'm trying to share with you all in this episode I was told that I was beautiful just the way I was. Oh, and my mother's Neapolitan Italian, and they have a saying, every cockroach is beautiful to their mother. Does anybody understand what this means? Cockroach, the poor cockroaches. I'm just saying, I'm a child here. And I was held, thank you, Terry Real, with equanimity, with unconditional love. Thank you, Gabor Matei. I was made to love. I was allowed to do the free thing that any child would want. So anytime I see a person, I know there's a child there, which is why divine masculine will pull me back in some way, shape, or form, the good ones, and help me to see better. And the seeing better is good because that makes me a better communicator. And that's because there are those who are not emotional lifters, and they don't want to welcome their emotions. They do have a way that they will use their brain, and I will not have any idea because I'm not looking at them like that because I'm not looking at a person except for with the eyes of my right mode, and so I'm connecting to their child, their child self. Now, I will know if they're physically of any kind of threat. That I'm certain of, but if there's anything else going on behind the scenes, I won't know. Not that I care, by the way. That's the other part, but... um. The story that I was going to share was even when somebody who you love dearly doesn't see you, but you don't actually cancel yourself out because you were seen as an infant, as a child. Again, the secure attachment is important. So my whole self knows I'm worthy. 
And so anyone who does not see me is not going to chip away at my self-confidence. <laughs> Whenever I hear people chip away, I'm like, okay, some of us, we didn't get chipped away. It was more like, ah, you can have it back. No, we will take it. I can plant a flower today. I'm going to do something, you know, so connection beyond the soul itself. It's because my body is safe to be myself with you or without you. And that's why I can enjoy you with or without you. And that's why when I look to the past, oh, yes, now remember the polyamory. I love my lovers. I love all of them. <laughs> oh, I love so many people. It's not even funny. And uh, when I think of the ones who uh, definitely... <laughs> If I were a mature version of myself, I think there's uh, some people I think about. They, they were really good at using their words. They're nice people, but they could do better. We'll put it that way. So long story short, I saw this woman on TikTok. She's a mystic 4D. <laughs> As she spit it out on camera, women, <laughs> your husbands, they're cheating on you with porn. And I was like, what the heck? They're all polyamory. And I'm like, that's not even polyamory. What are you doing? <laughs> and she's like, it's all energy and an exchange of energy. So I noticed how people are using what I get to learn from Daniel Siegel about the brain and energy and organization and chaos. And so, yeah, that's why I'm pseudoscience late again. I actually follow the good academics, the good educators. They explain to me how things work. And then I'm like, okay, now I'm figuring out why some people are complete skeptics of people like me, which is great and dandy. It's okay because there's plenty of good educators for them out there. But then there's those who follow, you know, Venuses of goddesses of May and Mars and all that, and they're just all over, you know, bullshit echo chambers. So I'm here for the ones who can use the in-between to say, okay, let's talk some common sense. Flat earthers, leave them alone. Yoga demon people, leave them alone. <laughs> Anyone who talks about energy vampires, leave them alone. You know, let's come on over here. Let's talk about Akashic Record readings. Let's talk about personal development. Let's talk about the beauty of being a human spirit, <laughs> shall we? Let's actually embody what is the Christ consciousness, which I learned all about, and now I know how to define it. Enlightenment, soul age group, a.k.a. functional adult you, your inner child lives, no rejection, abandonment, no injustice, betrayal, or shame or humiliation wound. Nope, none of that. So here's where healthy self-worth means I am irreplaceable. You're irreplaceable. So here's where Sadhguru, come on in. Where are you, Sadhguru? Let's read. Your contribution to the world is you, how you live, how joyful you are. Everything has an impact. However, your person who does not know that you are worthy from your inner child, I will meet what is going to be your biological rudeness. I will meet that you will not acknowledge my feelings or who I am. You will not have a sense of awareness at all of reciprocity. You will only be coming to me for that which you want all the time, not just sometimes, which by the way, I'm accustomed to in the first place. Because when I got told in this other instance, one of my courses, what you can't always be on, uh, what do you mean? Don't you want to always be on? Don't you have a love button? Aren't you securely attached? Don't you know how to use your left and right mode together? Yeah, aren't you a subject matter expert in the field? What are you doing? Why are you still not on? I'm confused now. What are you learning? Are you applying what you teach? Oh, you're one of those. You don't walk the walk and talk the talk. I see. Okay, so uh, let me put that to the side. Seeking meaning in one's behavior is what people who are maladaptive children don't do. They justify their behavior, they keep the behavior, and they actually don't acknowledge the other self. So they don't move beyond the solo self. That's why they don't learn how to do things right here. Here's another one for you. Every word you utter, said Guru again, every action you take, your very existence, is it for everyone's well-being or is it just about you? IHP is not about Maria, but Maria gets to use stories because I know what it is to be myself. It's because I got attachment and trauma informed and then I applied it. I was like, do I have child charge parts? I had them. I organically moved through them. Yes. Does that mean that I have everything cleared away? No. My three-year-old comes up with my mom and my twin. That's my reactivity. As for twin flames, soulmates, no reactivity. No. I'm being my emotional, mental, and physical grown-up. I've consistently chosen how to work to respect people while they project their shame, blame, fault, and revenge, codependent, love avoidant, and love dependent people. They are all needy for a person like me. And the ones who are avoidant, they give us breathing room, which is why 
ghosting, I laugh again, discard, laugh again, walking away, laugh, ha ha, do you think that I'm missing you while I'm busy with life doing something? I'm not even thinking that you don't want to be around me because I'm securely attached, so I'm not like, oh my god, they don't want me, and even if I ever bothered, weren't wondering, which has happened with friends, and I've told one of my good friends, I'll never forget, I was like, you know, I have things that come up, but I'm not going to let them get to me. Because if you don't like me, I think you're going to let me know. <laughs> At some point, you're going to make sure I know that you don't like me. So when you know you're worthy, it's not because of superiority. That means you don't know you're worthy. The grandiosity people, and it's not because of shame. You don't feel less. You feel here. Thank you, Terry Real. All the good therapists will let you know. So self-love is necessary to love others because otherwise you're going to be a teenager who will have envy, jealousy, spite, attachment, wounds, all this stuff and make up stories in your brain and you won't be connected beyond the soul, low self. You'll be connected to your herd and to the story, which again, there's a lot of entertainment as some people point out. Uh, entertainment is about the dopamine, the survival mode. So there are the human suffering love narrative groups because see the dysregulated nervous system of an inner child, it's dysregulated and dysfunctional because they only know that. So their default mode network consistently navigates those 12 months. And in fact, there's a pattern. We'll talk about that some other time. I uh, want to let you all go. But uh, long story short, self-love, necessary for sure. If your heart is closed off to you and others, you're just repeating traumatization over and over again for some. Uh, and when you see people actually justifying their trauma bonded relationships and you give them attachment trauma information, you remember, like I do, Patrick Tian, who shares how a childhood trauma survivor will not want to give up on a relationship as long as they're obviously not taking care of themselves. And we got some children yelling others. So I think it's time to let you all go so we don't have to, you know, have that in our um, episode. Thank you for stopping by. If you have any questions, uh, again, let me know and have a good day.